guys this is Heather I'm Heather um just wanted to do an introduction for this video I have been in um, contact with Monica from Monica Barnes art um, wonderful spirit I, I just love her um, she has inspired me to do so much and so while we were talking she suggested that we do a collaboration which is like ah, me I don't even do resin art but um, I just felt honored and and excited and scared um, <laughs> so anyways what we decided to do was an 18 inch round it had to be mixed media um, so we could throw anything we wanted in there as long as it had resin and it had to have a tree so um, this is the piece that I have finished for the video anyway I love it it is for sale and there's my tree actually I did two but I did acrylic painting first and then I drew the tree on and a second time actually because I painted over the lines and so I couldn't see it then I added uh, the tree with using resin and a porcupine quill and my mica pigments were all from Color Cottage. And then I used mica flakes, little tiny mica flakes that I got um, in a jar. And I dyed them an orange, like a light orange, a medium orange, and a red. And I put them on the tree limbs. And then I scattered them around the base of the tree so that they're like laying there on the edge of the cliff. So, oop, I used a technique that um, Petra Jungbled, or Youngbled, mm, I don't know, um, I think it's Jungbled, but I mention her name and I spell it wrong in the actual video. Sorry, Petra, I love you dearly. But anyway, she was doing these pieces that where she was using a, a skewer to push the resin around and actually paint with resin. And there was so much control with it. I was like, oh God, I have to try that. So I did. I tried it on the tree and it turned out really good. So i very tedious. A um, lot of wasted resin because how you do mix up just like a, you know, a teaspoon total, you'd still not use it all. But anyways, that's it, and I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. So, let's see. Uh, subscribe, like, share. Thank you very much if you already have, and uh, we will uh, see you at the end of the video, and enjoy, and we'll uh, see you next time. <laughs> And thank you so much for all your comments. I just love reading them and responding them, so responding to them. So enough of this talking. Let's get going. Hi guys. Welcome. This is Heather. And I am so excited. I have to tell you this. I am working on a project I'm doing a collaboration with Monica Barnes of Monica Barnes Art. And uh, we struck up a conversation. Actually, I struck up a conversation with her. She has really inspired me to uh, start working with resin. Even though I'm a control freak and it's really hard for me to let go of things like that. But anyways... She's inspired me and touched my heart so much. The way she just does it. No, there's no fear. She's like fierce. 
she's an amazing artist and I wanted to send her a gift because I don't have any money to do anything so uh, I reached out to her and we were talking and so then she said we should do a collaboration and so we came up with a tree and this is an 18 inch round and my idea was to make this a really moody scene and I, I started videotaping the acrylic painting and I was already an hour into it and I had only done the top half and the bottom I hadn't even done this part yet so I thought well you know what this is about resin so I'm just going to show you how I'm controlling resin doing these two trees here. And um, I'll talk more about why I drew it the way I did. But I want to get some resin mixed up here. I think I'm going to do the black next. I don't need a whole lot, but I've only got a, a teaspoon measuring cup here a teaspoon measuring tool so I'm just going to do a teaspoon of each and put that in the black resin that I've got here yeah see this is gonna make this is make gonna make way too much and so now I'll put in a teaspoon of A. Okay. Get that into that. And I'm going to wipe out my spoon so that I can use it again for the next two colors. I only need just a little bit of black because I want to create a shadow. Because the tree that I, the first tree that I drew is right here on the side of the cliff and it's coming up over the edge. And it's this tree here is bending this way because the wind is just really torn the land up and so this tree is coming up behind this tree so it's helping support it and at the same time this tree is coming up behind it and supporting this tree to try to keep it from blowing away so get this mixed up really quick here And Petra, I'm probably going to butcher her last name, so I apologize now, Petra, if somebody points you to this video. Jangblood or Youngblood? It's J-O-E-N-G-B-L-O-O-D. She's done a couple, I don't know, two or three, actually, I think, of where she's really controlled the resin. By using a, a wooden skewer but I like using this porcupine quill so I'm gonna move this a little bit I want to create a shadow right here and then a little bit right here so I'm just dipping it in letting some of it come off and bring this right up to the edge I mean, I have to apologize because I had to see if I could do this before I actually did the video <laughs> I did the brown because I thought okay 
if I can actually do this, then I can go ahead and videotape it. <laughs> so now I'm just going to streak this down a little bit here. And I can even bring it down over the brown that I had already done. Get just a little bit, get just a little bit more here. Create a deeper shadow. And you can pull it with the end of your skewer or if you want to use a porcupine quill, toothpick, whatever you want. So now I need to put a little bit right here. Not too much by way of this side because the sun setting is is uh, reflecting off the tree. So I want to just pull some of that back. Get a line there. And make this tree trunk just a little bit fatter. You're basically just painting with a toothpick, I guess. So I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to do the same thing with this. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I am using Color Cottage Micas. The first one was Midnight Black. Uh, this one is coffee bean brown. Then this one is a mixture of sunset orange, copper penny shimmer, cranberry shimmer, and then just a tint of the coffee bean brown. Because I want to get... I want to get a reflection of what's in the sky and on the water to reflect what's in on the tree. So a teaspoon of B. Grape that. And then a teaspoon of A. I'm using epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store. Monica Barnes has got a coupon code. You can get it 20% off. So go, I'll have a link to her site, to her YouTube channel actually. And she's been putting the coupon code in her description box. So anyways, I got two gallons for $80, and then with the 20% coupon code, it pretty much took care of the shipping. So I think I paid oh, $79 total, something like that. So mixing this up. I want a deep red color. I think I can live with that. Again, still way too much.
And this is going to be kind of boring for you guys, so um, I don't have any editing software that allows me to add music, so you guys can at least enjoy some music while I'm doing this, so you can hear me chatter, or you can just turn the volume off and watch me um, play. That's really pretty. I love that copper sheen. I hope that comes through. So I want to put some red right in here. Or kind of, this is kind of like an autumn look, I guess. blend this into the black a little bit. See what that does. And if you get this if you get this where you don't want it, I found these really great tools. Oh, actually watching Miriam's Nature. She recommended buying these they come in three different sizes but they're little they got little fuzzies on the end so let's say I don't I don't want this right there I just wipe that dry you can see what I'm doing. So now I want to put a little bit right here. Just making it look kind of like tree bark, trying. I think I'm going to put some right here. I love this this method because I have control now. Now my blob came out and got a little bit ahead of me. So I'm going to reach for this. I'm going to wipe just a bit right there. I don't want to lose my brown. here I'm just dipping it in trying not to get too big of a glob Now at this point, when I get out to these little fine points, it's probably not going to matter, but I'm still going to cover them eventually. 
The next color I want to add on here is going to be um, autumn gold. And I also, with autumn gold, I took and put just a tinge of the coffee bean brown in it just to get it a little bit darker. So you'll see that next. Put just a little here make sure I don't touch anything that I've already done Sometimes you have to let it just drip off of the tip of your tool, whatever you're whatever you're using. I love this method. This is so much fun. It reminds me of paint by numbers when I was a kid. But you can see how this is making it so easy to control the resin. So I'll put a little bit right in here on this branch here and then I'll put some more down here on this part of the tree. And then we'll move on to the gold. So some right here. put just a little bit right there too. Try to, try to pull that out. Some right in here. I want to leave room for some gold so that so that we get to see all the colors. away from me. Oh! I dribbled. Can you see this part here? I dribbled big time, so what I'm going to do is instead of using my little tiny thing, I'm going to take my wet wipe. Give that a swipe. Try not to touch my black. Are you, am I in? Oh yeah, I'm in. So does it look like the sun is reflecting on the tree? Not yet? Maybe? I think I'm going to go back to my black really quick here. So I'm going to wipe off my porcupine quill go back to black and I see a, a branch here that I had coming off of the tree and that's too much so we'll try to scoop some off yeah that wasn't good
to way too much. The good part is, if you think that you don't, if you think that it's not good, or if you think you made a mistake, you can scrape it here while it's wet. Or, when it's, you can let it cure and dry, and then add paint over it to cover it up. So let's do the gold. Teaspoon of that. How long are we? Oh, I can't see. And these, I just did B, and now I need to do A. Scraping that in. You know how, well, maybe you don't, maybe, maybe I am just weird, but when you look at a tree that's fighting for its life, <laughs> as this, these trees are doing, it reminds me of points of my life where I was in such a state where I was just clinging to life, trying to just survive and when you look at trees, you see them growing their roots deep so that they're firmly planted. Sometimes they're in a precarious position, like these trees are. I think I like that deep, that deep hue. And there's just something that says to me that's me kind of tried to to make my life you know have meaning working out how best to live my life you know our actions speak louder than our words, of course. But there's always that point when things just get thrown at you and you just don't know what to do, so you're just clinging to what you have been learned. and You just want... You want it to get better. You... You just fight to survive. So I see this tree and I see me at, at different stages of my life where I just really struggled with not knowing what to do, where to go. And a, a tree's branches are, are reaching out to the sun for its energy and its life. It's just, I don't know. I'm not a poet. 
So I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at. I just see this. I just see me. <laughs> at different stages of my life. And it hasn't been just once. <laughs> Just clinging on for dear life just to survive. Trying to, to say, okay, God, here I am. Whatever I'm supposed to learn from this event, teach me. And, you know, if you don't believe in God and you believe something else, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. But I'm hoping you get the point. I'm just... Trying to... Get the point across that... We need to be like trees sometimes. And just cling... Cling to the earth and... Stretch our arms out to the sky and... Let the the sun and the air feed us and even though the wind tries to blow us over we will bend we won't break at least that's my hope <laughs> I don't want to break but I'm telling you, there's been times when I thought that I would. So I wanted this tree to have a lot of meaning for me. So. I think it does. Now that one got away from me. So I'm going to wipe some of that off. And put some yellow right here. So I think I want to put some leaves on this tree after this stuff is cured. Now you can do this. You can do one color and let it cure. Or you can do which is what I did with the brown. Or you can do uh, like two colors that you want to blend together. Which is what I'm trying to do here. And you can use a wooden skewer. I actually have wooden skewers. I just don't, I don't uh, personally care for them. And the reason being is I'm very rough. I'm very hard on my tools, I think. Um, because when I'm working with those wooden skewers, I end up bending the tips. And with this porcupine quill, I can't. I can't push too hard. Well, I could and then just break it, but this forces me to have a delicate hand. So just let that drip.
So are you bored out of your mind watching me do this? I apologize. What I should do is just uh, pause the camera, finish this off, off camera, and then we can come back and talk about the leaves. You, you, this is all I'm doing is just working it in to the spots where I want it to, to look like a reflection off of the, the sun. So I think that's what I'll do is I'll pause this and I will come back. So uh, it'll be several hours for me because I want to let this cure enough that when I touch it, it's not going to smear. And then we will come back and do the leaves. And I'll show you those too. So we'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm back. What do you think of my tree? Do you like it? I like it. I'm going to, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm going to add some leaves. Just a few, sparingly, I hope. Hope I don't go overboard. I don't know how to apply it other than just a, some Mod Podge maybe and a paintbrush but I've got three colors here I've got a cherry color an orange color and a yellow and orange mix and I've taken um, inks oh let's see here I've got Bombay India inks and oh pinatas so i just threw some of silver lux micas and glitters i bought some stuff off of uh, a facebook page a woman was going out of business and she had a bunch of things and at the time, I was getting uh, buying a lot of her polymer clay stuff, and she threw. I had several of these in. Let's see here. She sent me the silver and this gold and bronze. And this really pretty blue. And I've never used them. And I thought, you know what? They're big as far as leaves go. So after I dyed them and let them dry, I took my fingers and I went in and I just ripped them up. So I think what I want to do... I have no idea what I'm doing. I want the ye the yellow to be closest to the sun. Kind of like that. All right. So that looks okay. So what I'll do is Put that back in the cup and I'm going to get a different brush. I'm not going to go with a really big one uh, because I don't want a whole lot of Mod Podge on here. And I'm kind of, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know where to apply it. So I'm just going to apply it all over the branches, I guess. Are you seeing this? Yeah, you're seeing this. 
Am I recording? Yes. This will dry clear. So that's a good thing. So now I want to get this this yellow orange on. And I'm sorry, my hand is probably in the way. I think I should have put a little bit more Mod Podge down. How does that look? Does that look good? All right. Let's get some more Mod Podge down. Try to get a little, do a little hurrier. Hurrier? Let's do a little hurrier. What the hell? <laughs> Not only is my mind going, I'm making up my own words. Woohoo! I'm brilliant. I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put some of the darker orange down here on these. All right, here we go. Oh, that's way too thick. I get some of that out of there. Hopefully, these will stick well enough once this dries that I can put another layer of Mod Podge over them. And that will seal the ink just in case it wants to bleed. Yes, I'm doing a video, honey. Okay. How's that look? I wish you guys could answer me in real time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, so now we want just a few of the dark red. It's almost like a cherry color. And I don't want it all over, just just in a few spots. So hopefully I won't 
put too much on. This didn't rip. See how you just take it and you just rip it? I want some of my smaller pieces here. That one is a whole piece and I don't want that like that. So I'm going to rip it. Tear it, break it, or however, whatever. It's really doing. some up here I like those little tiny sparkles can you see those little tiny sparkles that are just um, they're like little dots can you see the can you see those little dots that are in mixed in with this stuff it's kind of cool it gives them a, just a little bit of extra sparkle that right here. Woo! Cool! Blow off the excess. This looks so... I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think it looks so cool. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. I think I need to paint around the edge or something because I didn't get it all. So what I need to do is go back through and paint the sides on the top half. Oh, I love this moody tree. Oh. Get back. Get back. So I'll let that dry. Put in the uh, coat on top. And then I will come back and we will do the resin. So it will be probably be uh, tomorrow for me. But for you it will be in a second. Okay. See you then. Hi guys. I'm ready for resin. I've got um, an 18 inch round and what I need to do is multiply the radius which is 9 inches times pi to get my square footage. And That came to 28 something. So you divide that by 30 because there's 30 milliliters in um, an ounce. And that comes up to uh, 9 ounces. So I'm mixing up a cup and a half of resin. This is from the epoxy store resin. It is called epoxy resin. A and B. B 
because I want to make sure that I have enough to cover the sides because your, your square inches for area is only the surface it doesn't cover the the depth of the sides and this is an, an inch board I think maybe what is it now five eighths for wood cutting because you know a two by four is not really two inches by four inches it's an inch and a half by three and a half now which is just ridiculous if you're gonna if you're gonna give us less wood stop calling it two by fours so I'm just getting this mixed up here and my big heavy-duty torch is out of commission my husband took it to try to fix the, the trigger and he left it in the garage so I'm gonna use just this to torch 400 make sure there's no cat hair in it and then I'm gonna transfer it over to my curing station which is um, two metal racks to, um, oh what did I do what a zip tie I zip tied them together so that they're sturdy they won't they'll move as one now and then I took dollar store clear curtains, shower curtains, and I taped over the top and then I taped them around the sides and then the front has an opening that I've got taped shut. And I did my diptych in there to cure after I made sure that there's no cat hairs on it. And I just pulled them out this morning. And they are clean. There's no cat hair. I don't have to do any sanding or buffing or anything. So I'm excited about that. So this looks pretty good. I'm just going to give the sides a good scrape again here. And I don't care about the bubbles. Um, the torch will get rid of those. But I don't see any streaking. So let's let's see how many how long have I been? Three, four almost four minutes. So that's good. So if you're interested in this spatula thingy, whatever it is, I got it off of Amazon. It came in a package of two. But I like using this because it's silicone and the um, resin comes right off if I don't wipe it right away. So I'm just going to pour this on. Leave myself a little just in case I um, screw up, which is <laughs> pretty normal for me. I kind of want a thick coat on this top here um, so that it completely covers. Look at my leaves! I'm so excited! Aren't they pretty? I don't want to rush this to go over the edge just yet so I'm just gently pushing it toward the edge. I I have no idea. I, I'm not. I got a gunk in there. Where did it go? Okay. I'm not a resin expert by any means. In fact, it kind of scares me um, when it comes to mixing it on the board with all of the different micas because I over mix and it just turns to one bland color which is very disappointing it's expensive and I hate wasting money when I don't have any to waste and I'm sure you all feel the same way I mean This is just, this isn't a hobby for me. I, I try to make pieces that people are going to love 
enough to buy. Because that's my income. I do these videos to teach. And then, you know, maybe you realize that there's a lot of money invested, time invested, and it would be cheaper for you in the long run to just purchase something instead of making it yourself. But the goal is to get you to make things if you if you like creative things. All right, I think we're ready for torching. <coughs> Excuse me. Get rid of the bubbles. They come out really fast. There are several coats of acrylic paint on here. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this. It takes me a little longer with this small torch because it doesn't have the, the flame that the big one does. So I just want to make sure I have everything. All of the bubbles. So now, I'm seeing cat hairs. Some of these things, I don't know what they are. Let's see if I can tip this. Get some of it to run down here. There's something in here. What is that? hair oh come on there we go I need more resin over here my table is level my piece is level um, So I'm not sure why it's tipping like it is. Okay. So I'm going to take this, I'll, I'll spend more time picking at the hairs, and then I'm going to put it in the, the curing rack, and I will bring this back out tomorrow. So we will see you then. Oh, oops, sorry. I am holding my camera by hand now, so I'm trying to show you the end result here do some close-ups it's hard for me to get pictures with my without my reflection in it but here's the tree and my acrylic painting and there's the leaves that are laying on the ground around the tree roots Reflection of the sun in the water. Here's the other side of the cliff. I apologize for this reflection. I don't know how to do it without it. But anyways, the tree leaves almost look like flowers, don't they? Very cool. Anyways, 
I just want to thank you guys once again for uh, sticking with me throughout this video and thank you Monica for asking me to do a collaboration with you this was a great challenge and um, I just feel really <laughs> blessed that, that I did it because it turned out so good I love that tree I love all of it but anyways thank you all from the bottom of my heart and I really really love this piece <laughs> I can't get over it oh, I'm so in love anyways <laughs>